Hello guys, welcome to the Web Fundamentals learning part here on TryHackMe and today we'll be starting a new model how the web works uh, but first let's see what exactly we'll be going through here on the Web Fundamentals. Uh, the aim of this part is to teach us how to attack web applications, uh, to successfully attack and exploit web applications uh, we need to understand how they work so the first section which is the web fundamentals will give us all the prerequisite knowledge on this uh, the second section is security tools focuses on learning how to use industry uh, standard tools to interact with your target the third section of vulnerabilities uh, covers uh, vulnerabilities found in web applications today uh, this section will go over uh, root causes of these uh, vulnerabilities and give you hands-on experience on exploiting them. So basically, these uh, are the parts we are going to be going through. And the final section will be practice make uh, perfect. This session will help us to apply what we have learned in previous sections. After completing this part, we should be able to understand how web applications work, uh, utilize industry uh, standard tooling when attacking web applications and then explain and exploit common web vulnerabilities and uh, lastly we'll, we'll be, we will be able to apply this knowledge to other targets uh, be it uh, within an interview or a professional web application security assessment uh, the prerequisite for this is the pre-security learning part which we already covered and today we are starting with the first module which is how the web works here we're going to uh, basically to become a better hacker it's vital to understand the underlying functions of the world uh, world wide web www and what makes it work so without further ado we we'll jump into the first room. The first room is DNS in detail. So we are going to learn how the DNS works and how it helps us access uh, the uh, internet service. Now we're going to skip the. Uh, of course, we're going to skip the the walkthrough video because uh, yes. And basically, I'm going to clear this because actually I have covered this room before. Um, in um, I think in complete uh, introduction to. What is it called? Intro to cybersecurity, I think. Um, under the pre security learning part, I think. So, but I'm just going to clear it. Uh, this is more like because I'm covering the uh, uh, web fundamentals room, I'm just going to, I'm redoing all the videos again. So, making it stick. So, let's get on to it. Tax one What is DNS? Uh, DNS stands for domain name system. Uh, basically, it provides a simple way for us to communicate with devices on the internet without remembering complex numbers so um basically it, it's much uh, like every house has a unique address for sending mail directly to it so every computer on the internet has its own unique address to communicate uh, with its called an ip address now an ip address looks like the following uh, more like uh, a, a set of numbers uh, we train between two, 0 to 255 we call them octet so one two three four so and uh, uh, the set of digits range from 0 to 255 and uh, separated by a period now when you want to visit a website it is not exactly convenient to remember this complicated set of numbers and that's where the dns comes in so it's more like it's dns basically means converting your domain name to the number because we can't remember the number so we use the names which is more easier for us to remember and then when we type in those numbers on our website portals it will now convert it to the actual uh, ip address of that website so basically uh, it's resolving uh, the name of uh, the the website to the uh, ip address okay for example, uh, if you type in try hack me, it resolves it to this, but this is actually the IP address of try hack me. So basically that's what domain uh, DNS does. Uh, what does uh, uh, domain name system start for? <laughs> basically, I've just answered that. What does DNS start for? So it's uh, the domain uh, name, sorry, and system. Okay. Um, that answers that and uh, we head on to tax two uh, domain hierarchy so basically um, uh, we do have levels or hierarchy in the domain name system uh, there is what we call a domain a TLD the top level domain so basically a TLD is the most right 
uh, is the most right hand part of the domain name so for example the tryhackme.com uh, tld is the dot com okay so basically that's what we call the top level domain there are two types of the tld we have the g uh, tld which is which stands for generic top level and cc tld which starts for country code top level domain now historically a g tld was meant to tell the user the domain name's purpose for example a a.com uh, would be for a commercial purpose uh, or purposes dot org for an organization dot edu for education and dot gov for government and a cctld was used for geographical purposes for example dot ca stands for canada dot uh, school dot uk for uk and so on and uh, now there is an influx of new gtlds ranging from dot online to dot club dot website dot bees dot za and so on and so forth uh, for a full list of these TLDs, the top level domains, we have over 2,000 of them. You can check this in case you want to create your own website and so on and so forth. Now, we have the second level domain. Uh, the, the second level domain here, uh, basically, uh, since you're taking the tryhackme.com as an example, the .com, part of the, t the .com part is the TLD which is the top level domain and the try hack me is the second level uh, second level domain now when registering a domain name uh, the second level domain is limited to 63 characters plus the top level domain and can only use a to z zero to nine and hyphens uh, cannot start or end with hyphens hyphens or have consecutive hyphens all right now lastly here is the subdomain um, a subdomain sits on the left hand side of the second of the second level domain using a period to separate it for example in the name admin.tryhackme.com the admin part is the subdomain a subdomain name has the same creation restrictions as a second level domain uh, being limited to 63 characters and can only use a to z and uh, 0 to 9 and hyphens and then these hyphens cannot start or end the uh, domain name or have consecutive hyphens now you can use multiple subdomain splits with periods to create longer names such as jupiter.servers.tryacme.com and so on but the length must be kept to 253 characters or less in total so there is no limit to the number of subdomains you can create for your domain name okay what is the maximum what is the maximum length of the subdomain? I think that's 63. Correct. Now, which of the following characters cannot be used in a subdomain? In a subdomain, I think it's the dash. Oh, I'm sorry, it's the underscore. Sorry, uh, the dash is hyphen. So, yeah. Now, uh, what is the maximum length of a domain name? I think that's where the 253 comes in. That's the maximum it can take. And what type of TLD top level domain is the .co.uk? That should be the CCTLD. Uh, the CCTLD. Okay. Over here. Country code. Country code top level, top level domain. Uh, let's head on to tax tree. We are in tax tree, we are covering record types. Now, the DNS record types. Uh, DNS isn't just for websites though, and multiple types of DNS record rec exist. So, we'll go over some of the most common ones uh, that you likely come across. The first is the A record. This record resolved to IP version 4 addresses, for example, 104.226.10.229. Now, we have the AAAA record. This record resolved to IP version 6, which is the most recent IP um, uh, kinds. Um, they look like this. Okay, so basically, that's what it does. Now, the C name record. Now, this record resolved to another domain name, for example, TriacMe. Triac Mix online shop has the subdomain name store.triacme.com. Now, this would re which re returns a C name record shops.shopify.com. Another DNS request would then be made to shops.shopify.com to work out the IP address. So basically, that's what uh, a C name does. Now, now this, it, re it resolves to another domain name. So basically, now the MX record, this record resolves to the address. Of the server that handles the email for the domain you are querying okay so for example an mx record response for tryhackme.com would look something like 
alt1.aspmx.l.google.com this records also come with a priority flag now this tells the client in which order to try the servers and uh, this is perfect for if the main servers go down an email needs to be sent to a backup server lastly on the record types is the txt record now txt records are free uh, text fields where um, any text based data can be stored so txt records have multiple uses but some common ones uh, can be to list servers that have the authority to send an email on behalf of the domain this can help in the battle against spam and spoofed email uh, they can also be used to verify ownership of the domain name when signing up for the third party services now answering the questions here um what type of record would be used to advise you where to send email where to send email that should be mx correct and what type of record uh, handles ip version 6 address that should be the aaa record and uh, we head into tax 4 on tax 4 we're going to be looking at making a request so what happens when you make a dns request the first thing that happened is uh, when you request a domain name the computer first checks its local cache to see if you have previously looked up the address recently if not a request to your recursive dns server will be made secondly a recursive dns server is usually provided by your isp uh, that is uh, your internet providers yes uh, but you can also choose your own the server also has a local cache of recently looked up domain names so if a result is found locally this is sent back to your computer and your request end here otherwise this is common for popular and heavily requested services such as google facebook twitter and so on but if the request cannot be found locally a journey begins to find the correct answer starting with the internet's root dns server now, the root server acts as the DNS backbone of the internet. Their job is to redirect you to the correct top-level domain server, depending on your request. Okay, So if the example you requested, which is www.tryhackme.com, the root server will recognize the top-level domain of which is .com and refer you to the correct top-level domain server that deals with .com addresses. So for instance, uh, basically this is what happens so uh, the first is when you type in a website it checks your cache on your computer if it's not there it goes to the recursive dns server which it checks if it's not there it will now send it to the root dns server which the basic job here is to redirect you to the uh, exact uh, top level domain server that has that web address that you you're trying to look for which is in this case dot com and then uh fourth here is the top level domain server which holds records for where to find the authoritative server uh to the answer uh to answer the dns request of course now the authoritative server is often also known as the names the name server for the dom for the domain so for example the name server of tryacme.com is keep.nscloudfair.com and uh, uma.nscloudfair.com so on so this is more like uh, the name server um, so you will often find multiple name servers for a domain name to act as a backup in case one goes down so uh, the next it you just go like we mentioned to go to the tld the tld will now refer you to the authoritative the exact authoritative dns server which in turn now brings you the answer uh, or pulls out that html page for the website as a result to your computer so uh, like we just mentioned an authoritative dns server is is the server that is responsible uh, for storing the dns uh, records uh, for a particular domain name and uh, where any updates to your domain name dns records will be made now depending on the record type the dns record is then sent back to the recursive dns server uh, where a local copy will be captured for future requests and then relayed back to the original client that made the request now the dns records all come with a ttl time to leave value this value is a number represented in seconds that the response should be saved for locally until you have to look it up again Kachain saves uh, on having the on having to make a dns request every time you communicate with the server okay saves that time all right now answering the question here what fields specific specifies how long a dns record should be captured that's the t time to leave ttl 
and uh, what type of DNS server is usually provided by your ISP recursive uh, that is the recursive DNS server what type of server holds all the records for a domain all the records for a domain uh, authoritative authoritative mm. um, I'm not spelling that right authoritative <laughs> yes a-t-h-o-r-i-t-a-t-i-v correct and lastly we have a practical uh, I'm just going to click this website uh, so it opens and then here we have uh, using the website on the right uh, we're opening that we can build request uh, to make DNS queries and view the results. The website will, will also show you the command you will need to run on your own computer if you wish to make the request yourself. So it's loading. It usually takes some time sometimes. So um, Okay, so we're ready to answer uh, the questions here on the practical. It took a while to load. I, for some reason, I don't know why it took this long to load up this page, but here we go. Uh, what is the C name of shop.website.thm? Uh, so it's more like we're going to, this is the subdomain we're going to be typing, which is, uh, um, is shop.website.thm. And here we're going to be looking at the DNS types. So the first question is the C name. So we're looking for C name. The subdomain is we already have website.thm here, so we just need to put the first sub subdomain name here, which is um, shop. So I'm going to type uh, OT, and you can see here, type C name shop.website.thm, which is what we require here. We'll send a DNS request, and we'll have the server, the address, and uh, the question says, what is the C name? So over here, the canonical name, which is the C name, is shops.myshopify.com. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste this here and that's the correct answer. Now, what is the value of the TXT record for of website.thm? Uh, so we're going to, we're looking for the TXT um, record type for, um, you see here, we already have type TXT website.thm. So I don't need to type in anything here. So I'm just going to send the DNS request and... Uh, the non-authoritative answer here, website.tht text is THM, which is the flag we have here. So I'm going to copy country C and paste and answer. Okay, now uh, what is the numeric priority value for the MX record? So we're going to, um, what is the numeric priority value for the MX record? So I'm just going to look for the MX record of website.thm since nothing is specified so we're looking at website.chm so we'll send a dns request and this is website.chm mail exchanger and uh, we're looking at the the numeric priority should be 30 as you can see here uh, mail exchanger 30 so this should be uh, the priority value and if you send that that should be the correct answer Okay, now what is the IP address for the A record of www.website.thm? So I'm going to be for, we're looking for the A record of, we can just use www. And okay, remove the dots so we can see the type A www.website.thm, send the DNX request. And we can see the address is turned at 10, 10, 10 over here. Okay. So I'm just going to copy that paste and put in one here, send, and that's the answer. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the DNS in detail room, uh, which is under the web fundamentals uh, learning part. And the next will be the H uh, HTTP in detail, which is still under the uh, web fundamentals. Uh, thank you for studying with me and thank you for learning with me. I'll see you guys in the next room and do have a lovely day. Ciao.